the Oklahoma chapter of the Second Amendment Association. Let's stand for prayer and pledge allegiance. Lord, we're thankful that we're able to come and civil tonight. We're able to talk about the freedoms that you've given our country. We pray, Lord, tonight for our legislature, Lord, that you'll direct their hearts, direct their thoughts as they write laws that affect us and affect our freedom, our future, the future of our country, our future of our children and grandchildren. Lord, we're thankful for those who are defending our freedom tonight. We pray, Lord, that you'll keep them safe out of harm's way. We pray, Lord, again, that what liberty that you've given us, that you've endowed with our country, that we'll be good stewards of that. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, BBC. Hey, we're back. Hey, you guys on Facebook Live, nothing new here. It's, instead of Typing in what parking lot, what house, I want you to type in what boat dock you're at, or what <laughs> sewage pond, or wherever it is you're floating from right now. But you guys, are, I'm pretty sure appreciate y'all making it here tonight. We got still got a pretty good room full of people. And so type in where you're at, it's just still like to know, and uh, say hello, because we're going to be checking here and see if we can maybe take a few questions, too. Uh, the Oklahoma Second Amendment. Oh, come on in, folks. Yeah, I have a little some seats back there. You bet. The Oklahoma Second Amendment Association is not merely a gun group. We are a liberty group that just happens to realize it takes guns to maintain that liberty. And we've actually been questioned on that, that you know, you guys should just be Second Amendment, that's it. No, it, it, it's about liberty. In fact, we even made sure of that on a bill this past, uh, I just got last time we talked, it was in April, but uh, Senate Bill 361 was uh, making sure that on a college campus, a person could exercise their First Amendment right without being persecuted for it. Uh, that's been a huge problem on Oklahoma campuses across the state, and it's a good step in the right direction to start getting, uh, like I say, one of those rights back. And so people say, well, that's, that's not Second Amendment. It don't matter, folks. That's the way we are, and that's the way we're going to be. So anything we can do to defend liberty, that's what we're going to be a part of. By the way, Bobby Cleveland's in the house. Woo! Woo! There's not a meeting without Cleveland showing up. <laughs> the only guy that's got a, a county named after him, a town named after him, a president they named a president after him. Of course, that's been a while back, though, right? But, no. but you remember him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember well, President Cleveland. You remember President Cleveland? Yes. I bet you do. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got a big event coming up June the 1st, uh, and, and if you haven't bought tickets to this, folks, this has been a huge year in accomplishments for the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association and your liberties throughout this state. With constitutional carry and several other gun bills passed, uh, plus several other liberty bills I've mentioned here, it's time to recognize these legislators who have done such an awesome job that we've been able to work with and be able to... Uh, to celebrate and also present them awards for the great job that they've done. And that's going to take place at Cattleman's on June the 1st at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, all right? If you haven't gotten tickets, go on eBright. We're going to be sending out emails. Okay, you're doing this. I'm not sure. Is that me or you? Oh, okay. That's you. I'm, I'm talking to myself. Let me know when you're talking to me. <laughs> camera, like our I've been talking for 30 seconds. I've already messed up here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but get tickets. Now, like I say, yeah, they're 100 bucks a piece. Well, that's a lot. Well, you're buying a legislator's dinner. That's what's going on. And we're inviting them and their spouse uh, to show up. And it's not all of them, but it's the ones that have absolutely participated in our Second Amendment rights and worked uh, to get constitutional carry passed. So you guys, people say, you know, well, we need to do something, we do something. This is it. This is the time. It'll be a great evening. We're going to be at, like I say, Cattleman's. I've already made sure that the uh, stakes will not have jockey marks on it. Let's try not to cross that. Uh, I was asked, Mr. Gillespie, I want you to answer this question. I was asked what was going to be on the menu. Uh, steak. Steak. Chicken <laughs> breast. Chicken breast. Catfish. Catfish. That's the third one. Thank you. That's why I went to you for that. 
It's all halal so, and gluten. So, gluten you can, so that's what we've got going on the menu for that night, along with, like I said, we're going to be passing out some awards to legislators. And I want you to be there. We need a good crowd. We need to show these guys and ladies and gentlemen that they're being supported. And uh, it, it's a big deal. So is there any other questions on, on that tonight? Really? I answered all the questions before I start. Okay. How many tickets? How many Who, people here bought a ticket? Who's got tickets so far? Oh, come on, guys. You guys, Facebook Live, you need to get your tickets, too. Uh, and we can work on that tonight. Hey, I made a post about giving my ticket away to yes. someone that I bought. That's correct. And uh, only one person went on it, Miss Cheryl Johnson from Tulsa. Oh, Cheryl Johnson, you the got winner. your ticket is going to be waiting on you at Cattleman's. Uh, so that's a cool deal. Yeah, Thank you, much. James, for, for donating a ticket. Anyone else that you can't make it that night, but you want to donate to make sure someone can be there, Please do. Anyone plan on going? Am I just the only one going? Okay, there we go. That's all right. I, I knew I wouldn't be there by myself, which would be fine because it's a great bunch to be there. Uh, that's that for sure. Anyway, so there's no other questions on that. Okay, um, let's see. Come, uh, yeah, just Thursday night, some people that uh, we'll just see how much sense they have asked me to speak at the Pontotoc County Republican Party. They've invited me down for that because they want to celebrate constitutional carry and the Second Amendment accomplishments this year. And they're going to have a big party down there and dinner at that, at the Pontotoc County. So I'm looking forward to going to that. Uh, like I say, folks, this is a statewide deal. Um, and I'm, I'm thrilled that anyone who wants to recognize this, and, and there'll be legislators there. And we'll just see if they're the, the ones that have kept a, a good grade on this. If not, we'll still be nice. Is there food? Is there food? Uh, I wouldn't be going if there wasn't. Is it, <laughs> is it, is it free? Is it free? Uh, if you're Republican and you show up, do they turn people away? I don't think so. So we'll, we'll try that. So, yeah, if you're in Pontotoc County, you're Republicans, you guys need to show up. Uh, you're, you're, even if you're a county next to them, I would sneak in there and see what's going on, too. So that's what's going on that. Now, uh, a bill that we've gotten signed, not we, another bill that was signed this year, is Senate Bill 708 by Senator Kim David. Uh, what this bill does, it allows municipal employees to carry a handgun while on the job. And now before you get too excited about this, uh, the bill, uh, the city council has to approve a policy before an employee can carry. The second part of it is that the, em the employee must literally be a commissioned officer or an armed security guard. So when this bill came out, obviously I went against it because any advances towards Second Amendment rights were before, but we didn't get on board and neither did the NRA because State Representative Bobby Cleveland made sure county employees could carry while on the job. So it should have, with an SDA license, with just a standard SDA license. So there's no reason why, there's no reason why a municipal employee should not be able to do the same. Unless for some reason municipal employees are not to be trusted as much as a county employee, I don't see so. I, th I think it would be fine if we ran both uh, side by side like that. So anyway, that's something. And also, you know, uh, things work by incrementalism. Next year, it could be added possibly that uh, with a person with an SDA license can qualify inside of this, which is the direction I was hoping it would take. But like I say, uh, that, that was a bill that the governor signed into law, so that is another advancement for Second Amendment rights, but it's going to be a pretty small, minimal advancement, but it is an advancement on that. Any questions on that? But, oh, good, I did a good job with the municipal, and now I can carry my gun there. Well, maybe. That's it, maybe. Um, now, uh, constitutional carry. We, see, we keep saying, and I tell you, I'm so glad we have our discussion group. You guys find it useful? Yes. We've got new people coming on. I agree. I agree. We've got new people coming on all the time and asking questions that have been repeated. Mm -hmm. Folks, be patient. This yes. is how this works. Not everyone sits in the schoolroom at one time, especially when it comes to social media. So they're coming in. We've, we've got new members coming into that group all the time. So please be patient. And, you know, if you don't know the answer to a question, please don't act like an authority because you've learned that we don't take too kindly to that. It's there for specific, exact answers. And people actually thrive on it because, one, the other thing, too, is we don't allow any foul language on that page because uh, I got several other reminders this week that there's 11- and 12-year-olds use that for their civics class. 
and what goes on in Second Amendment issues and other constitutional <coughs> issues. So we don't need a bunch of an adult foul mouth that can't control themselves when we have to have the youth. We have to have them for these rights to continue, otherwise they'll fade in one generation right with us, and I'm not gonna tolerate that uh, for a bit. So again, if for some reason you don't think you can go in there and be civil, bye, because we're, I'm gonna cater to the kids before I cater to you, it's gonna be that simple. Uh, do the kids buy memberships? No, nope, I don't care, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't care. So again, I appreciate that uh, you're going on and we, we've been able to use this. So let's go over real quick. Throw hands. Constitutional carry. Goes in effect November 1st. Are you, oh, I see hands already going up back there. <laughs> be ready back, be ready Facebook Live. Are you required on November 1st, are you required to inform the officer? No, no. unless he asks. Who, who said he was the F? David. God, I wish I had a prize for you. <laughs> you win so many anyway. But yes, that's correct. You are not required to inform the officer unless he asks. Now, if you're pulled over at a traffic stop, I would still inform the officer because your objective at a traffic stop is to what? Walk get get out of the ticket. <laughs> and when you're doing it cooperative, it's going to be much, much in your favor. Uh, and we've, I know personally in my own life that has happened many times. So. I highly recommend that. All right, so we're ready for another constitutional carry question? Yeah. Yeah, you ready? Ready? Okay, will you be able to carry on the educational property? No. 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 Not well, yet. unless it's a university and you have written permission from the president. Which is like easy to a lightning strike. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is correct. Now, I, now, this is what I like. There's always a yes or no answer, but then there's always an exception to it. It's almost like everything is like that. Uh, in, in a lot of laws, you, know, you can't, you can't, but oh, well, you can. This small exception, and it's very small, but it is there. So kudos to you. You just take take five bucks out of petty cash. <laughs> Ninety-five bucks to get to the banquet. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone ever gotten that permission? Uh, yes. Uh, President Burns Hargis told me that they had provided that a couple of times to students. Really? Obviously, they would not tell me who. <laughs> what university? Uh, Oklahoma State University. Uh, and I know it has happened at Panhandle State University in the Panhandle. Uh, was it just Pistol Pete or was it somebody else? You're a Pistol Pete. Anybody know the story about Pistol Pete? Uh, it's a good name. That guy had a good name for good reason. I mean, he's a long man. And for some reason, all of a sudden, for that name of that to not be uh, being able to take place on a college campus is beyond me. Also, people ask me, well, what about carrying on a college campus? Are we going to work on that in the future? Yes, but I'm not going to do a thing until we got college students ready to step up. Now, you might think, well, what's the big deal? Well, that's what Senate Bill 361 was all about, because these college students were being punished for any type of an advancement or protection of a constitutional right on campus. They were being brutalized, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking there's some universities that need to have some gun shows. Yeah, I think they need to have some gun shows, and this might be a way in to do that. So, uh, uh, especially that little one down there in Norman that seems to have problems with that. So anyway, that, that's part of the, the open door to some of those things there. Um, let's see, uh, before, before I forget to, now we talked about this last time, I'm just going to remind, Senate Bill 24 brought the shockwave and the uh, Remington Pack 13 and 14, which will be a legal product to own and carry as of November 1. What was the, other question, you ready? You ready? What was the previous penalty for having one of these weapons? Felony. Who is that, is that you? Who said that? Felony? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. People know that F word, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, that's, that's one of the others on that. So uh, also, the bills we have that are still, uh, in play, which, like I say, it's a session, which is two years. So any bill that's not heard this year can be carried over and, and completed next year and hopefully get to the <coughs> governor's desk. Uh, on that list, where did I put my list? Oh, here it is, I'm sorry. Uh, the teacher carry bill, House Bill 2336, that's all that needs to do is go to the Senate floor and then go to the governor's desk. Uh, 
House Bill 2072 by Representative Stiegel and Senator Scott. That's the private courier carry. Yes. That is the person that's a uh, you, not you two. Uber. <laughs> Uber. Uber. Uber driver, an Uber <laughs> driver or someone like that that's in their own private vehicle that's being told by a contract employee that they can't have a gun in their car. You're right. So that's uh, also House Bill 1001, which is so a felon, a person is a felon, can be in the vehicle with the person is in legal possession of a firearm. Uh, that is uh, by Mercy Olson. Uh, House Bill 1111. Uh, clarifies that an employer, an employee of a bar, would also be able to carry that bar uh, to protect himself or other people. Um, let's see, Senate Bill 46 is the same film. Carry it in any way. Senate Bill 897, which is a burden of proof bill to, to restore the standard ground law. All these uh, are in a position to still be moved next year. Uh, with, uh, with the new governor and with the going that has taken place this year, once we got constitutional carry, it, it wasn't a real big secret. They were like, we got your gun bill, leave us alone. And we still managed to get two or three other bills through, which by the way was, uh, one of the other ones was House Bill 2010. This is so you can carry, at the, or clarifies you can carry. You could already carry at a public trust property. Anyone here understand what a public trust property is? Got any questions? Who doesn't know what a public trust property is? Okay, public trust property, the zoo. You have the city who's provided the dirt. The city provides money, but they have it set up under a different structure of five or seven or eight people and set up a public trust, which is Title 60 of the state of Oklahoma. So then that manages because now it's taking money in along with the subsidy of the city. This is called, it's set up as a public trust. So since it's paid, taking public dollars, they thought that well, since we're a business, we can prohibit the carry of firearms in here. And the answer is no, you can't do that. So, which by the way, let me grab here real quick. Hang on with me. All right, here we go. Anybody know what this is? Sneaky Pete Sneaky holster. Pete. <laughs> Got three of them at home. They're awesome. Three, only three? Only, well, you know. Do you have one for a full size gun? Or is it just the three that? For uh, Glock 43. Okay. Nine mil. Okay. No, it is nine mil. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, whenever you decide to attend the zoo, or the gathering place, or the uh, River Park Authority in Tulsa, these are all public trust properties. The law says that it's, your firearm is to be concealed, which is fine. But for the open carry enthusiast, this thing moves right on your belt, just like that. Do you see the firearm inside of that? Sure do. So is that an open or concealed? Concealed. It's still concealed because you cannot see the firearm because the way some guy named Don Spencer made sure the bill was written years ago it was cleaned up. So again, you've got a gun in complete open in a holster that's completely out of view, so therefore it's considered concealed carry. So basically, for this first year, till we at least we can get the law where it's open carry also, or however long it takes us, you can get us. That's that's about ninety percent open carry, folks, because it gets right there. So that, oh, you want to close up? See, here today at Home Shopping Network. <coughs> the so. The next so anyway. Where do you get them? I, I ordered this online for, what was it called again? Sneaky Pete. Sneaky Pete. Sneakypete.com. Sneaky Pete. For like, it's less than 50 bucks. Yeah. Uh, Is I'm there different sure. sizes? Uh, I'm they, sure there are. They, they have them for a whole list of different firearms. Well, they have fact, that material. They have leather. Specific. When I looked it up, it said Bobby Cleveland size right on it. Yeah, good. <laughs> was that, that was a magnetic latch? It's a magnetic latch. Is that what we're getting here? Yeah, it's a magnetic latch. So it turns around. You, and the, the, the way Oklahoma law is, is if a reasonable person can see any portion of the firearm, it's considered open. But he, reasonable people, can anybody see inside of that? Right, yeah. and the way that thing's set, that's not going to so That's as close. So for a year or two, we get the law uh, like the <laughs> right we want. But again, we incrementalize. You got a question back there, Mr. Curtin? Yeah, the, uh, whenever you're saying a reasonable person can do it or can see the portion of the firearm, are you referring to also, does it also include printing? Or does it well, actually have to printing, a line of sight to That's a good question, and because some different states different? say the word printing, the Self Defense Act, the word printing never appears. So there is no such thing as printing as a concern in the state of Oklahoma. So 
Here's what I suggest too for you guys that like to just cause problems. <laughs> Get you a decal of a gun and put it on the outside. Of it. I saw one, a leather one, where they actually had leather work of a, it looked like a little 38 snub nose on the outside of a leather one. That does the same thing. <laughs> so, it's still, is it an open carry or concealed? Concealed. Right. Right. Oh, now, you really want to be right there, like two or three case. of these, and let them guess which one it's in. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, but like I say, uh, the River Park Authority, they even did some violations this last weekend at, um, what's the folks that came to the thing? This Hawk, Hawk Jam. Jam. Hawk Jam, thank you. Hawk Jam. Uh, we're we're going to be addressing that because that's on an open street, on an open area. That's just absolutely, uh, that's going to stop. Don, so, I suggest if anyone listening was not allowed in, to contact you. Contact well, that's good. Any, anyone who went to Hot Jam and that was declined entry because you were peacefully carrying a firearm, I would appreciate you contacting me. That is a good idea. Uh, like I said, we've got a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, We'll get to it, and like I say, folks, this stuff just doesn't happen all at once. There's still strategy that goes on. We got to make sure some of our ducks are all in a row, uh, and like I say, to, uh, before you go any legal advancement on it. But like I say, um, we're going to make sure all of our rights are restored. Period. Yes, Mr. President. Okay. Online question from Dave Chandra. Okay. Uh, this is regarding the constitutional carry. Okay. He wants to know how is this going to affect travel to other states. Will they honor constitutional carry or will permits still be required? Okay, I highly recommend if you've not obtained a SDA license and make sure you renew your SDA license if you're gonna travel out of state. Uh, states like Kansas and Missouri, it's like ours, you got a pulse, you can carry. But uh, other states, not every state that's constitutional carry is gonna recognize Oklahoma's. So I still highly recommend you have that license uh, with you. Uh, it's going to be like that for a while till uh, something happens, and I don't doubt anything's going to happen in the court nationally to overturn it. So it, I, I would expect national reciprocity would be an issue before the court sits. Okay, online question from Preston Wood. Okay. Are you allowed to carry a rifle as you're walking around? Great question. A, any firearm, it doesn't matter if it's a pistol, rifle, or shotgun, can only only be carried if it's in a holster, if it's in a, attached to a sling, if it's in a scabbard, or in a case. Okay, if you're carrying, you think you're going to carry a gun by hand and just putting it up over your shoulder and walk downtown, folks, that's brandishing. If you think you're going to carry it like this in a ready position, you might as well plan on getting shot. Because uh, right now things are still kind of sensitive on what you can and cannot do. Uh, and I I'm really concerned about more swatting that takes place where somebody just sees you carrying a gun that they're going to say they're going to say um oh he was pointing a gun at me or he was pointing a gun or he's being reckless so they can get a bunch of cops in and overreact okay two a is working give me one second okay two a is working i'm still waiting for this session to be over so we can get all of the bill information combined together so we can send it out to every law enforcement agency in this state including with the bills so they can see for themselves, and then it also includes a video from me saying, okay, this is the quick rundown of what you can do and what you cannot do, all right? And, and help get the word out on this uh, uh, so we don't have these overreactions. But folks, starting up front, since this is so new to our <coughs> culture, it is so new to our culture because the carry of a long gun for the act of self-defense in this state, this is the first time in 112 years. I mean, this is huge, and look at how people are freaking out about it, and nothing's happened yet, nothing. So, uh, so I wanna make sure it's very clear. That gun has gotta be hooked up to a sling uh, that's a long gun. It needs to be over your back. I would not have it in front of me, nowhere near a ready position. The other thing I would do is if you decide to go hang out at the park with some friends or gather with rifles, get the non-emergency phone number, call the local police, let them know what's going on so they don't go into freak out mode. And let's do this for a while till everyone gets adapted to it. I got one more question here first. Till, one more, till everyone gets adapted and gets used to this. Folks, it is an issue of culture. Arizona, they don't think twice about this. If someone walking down the street with an AR-15 strapped over their whatever, it's just another day. But here, this is Brandon. If you guys remember, remember how much they freaked out when open carry went in, in 2012? Yeah. 
And we heard the same thing. And I see someone open carrying, I'm going to call the police and we the same thing. We heard the same thing. Blood in the streets. Right. It's going to be awful. So anyway, you had a question. Let me get uh, this. Following up on that, carrying of long guns, that goes into effect on November 1? November 1. Okay. So what day of the week is November 1? Can someone look that up for me? Friday, I think. Friday night. Oh, that'd be a good day. Yep. Friday. <laughs> you know, on, on Saturday, you'll be able to carry. Saturday, midnight. Okay, so November 1st is on? Let me look. Friday. Saturday. It's on a Friday. It's on Friday. November 1st is on a Friday. Oh, Thursday at midnight to Friday Thursday. morning is when you can go. Okay. okay. All right, well, what we'll have to do is we'll find a place like we did an open carry. We met at a restaurant at uh, midnight with a bunch of us, and that was the safest place in town that night. <laughs> and we'll find, and I, I was told there was one guy out on Northwest Expressway that, um, and I wasn't told by him, that he was going to start putting long gun racks in, in a store, in, in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like it. Yeah. So, I mean, let's go. Absolutely. I'll, you know, I'll, Colonial days, they did that in churches. Yep. And churches? They had they they had their church their, their rifles lined up against the back. Well, so I, I you know I think you'll see some places like that. And folks, also the no gun signs are going up everywhere. Yeah. No surprise, no shock. Um, oh, yeah, it's they that so much. I would recommend, like we've always done before, the sign goes up. Let them know that you're a customer. You'll take your business elsewhere. You understand if they don't want to see rifles and shotguns in there. So just put a no open carry sign up or no long gun sign, which I understand those are already being made too. So that, that's what I would recommend. And let's don't, there's no need to get in the face of anybody and make this ugly uh, by any means. Um, hey folks, we won, okay? But to be, but to be uh, arrogant and just act like we can do this, no folks, we gotta be this. Someone steps on your foot while you're open carrying, tell them thank you. Have a nice day. They're going to try to provoke you in many, many ways. Yep. It's going to happen until, like I said, the culture finally accepts this. And they're going to have to accept it. And there's going to be times where they're going to make it ugly, but don't, there is no need to return to the ugliness for ugliness. It won't help us. And just one person acts like a jerk, and what are we all labeled like? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and jerk is a legal word to use on OK2A. Hey, <laughs> that's a legal word. Yeah, question there. Okay, online question from Ricky Stoll. Ricky Stoll. Any idea or word of a bill for suppressors to help combat combat the NFA regulations and wait time? Yes, we have actually introduced, and it was, and actually it was a Tenth Amendment bill, so that the state could take back the Tenth Amendment, and so we don't ask the federal government for permission on a constitutional right. So was it specifically suppressors? No. Uh, but was a Tenth Amendment? Yes. And like I say, uh, you got to have a state legislature that's got the guts to stand up and do it. And, you know, we just got to keep pushing them, folks. They weren't ready to stand up and pass constitutional carry last year, but we twisted their arms so hard. State Senator Nathan Dom twisted their arms so hard that we got it, we got it passed on the governor's desk. But then this year, how did they act? If you keep ramming it up there and ramming it up there, what was it like? It was like a freight train. Get out of the way. Mm -hmm. so who, was it Mr. Boker? Yes, yes sir. How about uh, SJR 16? Is that going to be introduced? Yes, in uh, it's introduced already. It's a change in the state constitution on the right to keep and bear arms. It's being carried by Senator Bullard. And it's so, and it specifically says your right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And also, the current language in it says that the Attorney General will uphold and defend this right. So it'll be the AG that'll be your uh, defense attorney or your attorney. If there's an issue, uh, you, yeah. To clarify on constitutional carry, we're allowed to carry a pistol with one in the chamber. How will that affect with long guns and shotguns? To clarify for everybody listening, anybody, that's a good question. Because again, OK2A's job is to take the stupid out of law, and we still got some stupid left in constitutional carry. Yes. Because you can carry a pistol, rifle, or shotgun, loaded or unloaded. They can be chambered. Ready to go. Now, when you get in your car, that changes. <laughs> that long gun cannot be chambered. Okay? That's right. Long gun cannot be chambered while you're in your vehicle. It can be magazine loaded. It cannot be chambered. But, guys, how do we do things here? One thing at a time. Yeah, we're going to make it simple uh, right across the board. It's going to take a little bit, but we're going to do it. Yes, sir. Alex. What about a change to the state constitution regarding these red flag laws that they're trying to put into place? Is there anything that we can do to say you can't deprive people of their 
life, liberty, or property. Well, until it would be a crime that would preclude them from having that property. It would be a, a statute. He's talking about a change of the state constitution to vote on red people. flag laws, and it, it, you wouldn't be able to get it in a, in a, in a constitution. It'd have to be a state statute. And then also, this would also go back to securing our Tenth Amendment right, so we could just tell the feds we're not doing, we're not paying attention to anything you require on that. That's because, like I said, the Tenth Amendment statute covers a whole lot of worms that need to get fixed. Yes, sir, do you have a question? Yeah. What are we classifying as a long gun? Well, we classify as a or by barrel length? Uh, bar by, by barrel length. Okay. Uh, anything so. over 16 inches on a rifle, anything over 18 inches on a shotgun is a long gun. So the shockwave is considered a firearm. Okay, how about pistol grip AR-15. Well, it depends on the barrel length. And it's also depends on whether it's got a stock on it or not. So that would be classified as a pistol, correct? That's correct. It has yes. a brace. Okay. Yeah, and the yeah. brace. Now, also, I recommend, guys, you, you pistol carriers, the AR-15 pistol carriers, yes. to, make it, to make it easier, and especially law enforcement is still learning because they don't know the difference between a pistol and a rifle, unfortunately. And I'm not trying to insult anybody, but there's a deal. Take that arm brace off because it, it looks like a stock. Yeah. It looks like a stock even though it's not a stock. So obviously that's a good option you could do. Almost all of those manufacturers have an ATF uh, opinion letter that is issued as well, clarifying that, that that firearm is in fact still a pistol with it. Right. You could print that off as I do and keep that in my bag when I travel. Right. If that question ever came up, I could at least have that discussion. And if you go to the right. zoo, they don't have that discussion. If you go to hockey game, they don't have that discussion. I agree. No, anytime you carry the law on you is a great idea. Because here it is, and carry it in your front pocket shirt. Don't carry it in the back, back pocket. Yes, Mr. Cleveland. To clarify, to get that into the Constitution, it would take a vote of the people. So you have to get a petition, get people to put a petition out there, get it signed by the correct amount. Then you take it to the legislature, and then it has to be put on the next ballot. So right. it can be done, but it takes the vote of the people, right. and it takes work. And I think the way that our, we're doing here in Oklahoma, I think we can pass it. I, I agree, because there's, like I said, there's a lot of things that can go into that 10th Amendment. One, you would be stopping the uh, killing of unborn babies with the 10th Amendment. Uh, you would be stopping the suppressors. <laughs> Uh, being a restriction, any gun being a restriction as far as that goes. I, see, I, I'm still not used to thinking that big with the whole thing. Class three. Uh, class, yeah, it, you, you can just say, no, it's not going to happen. Um, but like I said, you've got to have a legislature that's got the guts to do it, and it's you're going to take a lot more work to get more guts in there. Yes, Mr. Kern? So you're, I'm going to charge you by the question. You know, that's what the question. Right. So you're, you're saying that this, if it did go into the state constitution, it would kind of be like, Marijuana laws, laws are currently the feds could still bust you if you wrote that. Uh, Correct. It would not be yeah. illegal under state but law, but they could still bust you. But up, keep in you. mind, it, what you're talking about does not have to be a constitutional issue. It can be a state statute. But what Mr. Cleveland has described to get a state statute in, if the legislature won't do it, you can force them to do it by the people mm -hmm. going and saying you're going to do this, which is how uh, the, the marijuana card bill stuff went through. Yes, okay, online question from uh, Jesse Pierce okay. uh, said about an SBR wanting to know if that would be legal to carry under constitutional carry. Let me, uh, our attorney is still making sure on this. I'm not going to give you that answer yet, but we will give you an answer on it. And like I say, we, he wanted to check on a few things because you guys know Robert Robles on it. Yep. We just wanted to make sure on a few things about it before we said yes or no. But to me, I, don't, I think it would be. Thanks. Yes, sir. Back in your yeah. yeah. Clarify something for me. You okay. said if the state passes a bill or a right. constitutional amendment for our Constitution, we can make it where we can legally find a suppressor without going through the ATF? Correct. How would we, how could you possibly? Made in Oklahoma, that? sold in Oklahoma, kept in Oklahoma. Got that's it. the only way it'll work. Got that's it. the only way it'll work. And that's, Kansas had, was the first to do this. I think they were the first. And the dadgum suppressor left Oklahoma, went to some other state, and then that's where all the mess yeah. broke.
broke loose, and that guy got in a lot, a lot, a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. So that's what we've got to, uh, and, and again, states got states' rights. You just got to have, you got to stand up to it. Even though you're willing to and I'm willing to, you've got to have a legislature that's willing to stand up to it. So, and, a, and, a, and a governor that's willing to stand up to it. So, yes, sir. What was that FDR? Short S barrel rifle. SDR. SDR. Short barrel rifle. Technically, that would be a pistol if it's under a 16 inch That's part of the thing, too. There's the little caveat on the handle, the grip, and if there's even remotely looking like a stock. So give me time to get the answer to that. I'm amazed at the amount of people who want to carry a short barrel rifle when you can carry an AR pistol. Do about everything you want to do with that, that's for sure. So anyway, it keeps the, keeps the bad guys off my driveway, <laughs> for sure. Any other questions on that? Got one line? Uh, Josh Solar Josh? Okay. is uh, saying that uh, you said open carry of a long gun would be legal on a sling uh, November 1st, but you don't advise it? No. Question mark. Oh, no, no, no. As long as you have it on a sling, and we're going to do this in September and October, we're going to bring guns in here and show you how we suggest you carry. But if it's on a sling, obviously it's on your shoulder and the firearm is on your back. Also, some of the slings, you can turn the weapon the other way and have it pointing down behind you. So that, that is a sling. Uh, I, I didn't say, no, I'm saying don't carry in your bare hands. Yeah. Carrying in your bare hands is a easy brandishing fine criminal act. Yes, sir. Okay, there was a gentleman already uh, from Texas, I think, that came up, or was, he had something to do with Texas open carry. Uh -huh. And he came to Oklahoma City, went out to Lake, wherever our lake is, uh -huh. carrying a, an AR, and his wife was carrying a scatter gun, I think. And somebody called, he was openly carrying it, slung over his back. Didn't call and notify the police. Oklahoma City PD went out there with 12 or 15 officers. He told them what he was doing. Turned around, got back in their cars, and left. I am not aware of the incident. Yeah, it's on YouTube, and it's. Uh, well, from what I understand, there's a lot of videos on YouTube. <laughs> well, so I knew two of the cops there. Okay. Oh, do good. Because, uh, like I say, folks, uh, right now, and it's, it's not as bad as it was, but <coughs> still, I'm inundated with people saying, hey, this says the Second Amendment. Don needs to see that. And my, my inbox, my <laughs> cash, my stuff is just overloaded with stuff. I'm sorry, folks. It's just crap I already know. So I have to filter through it. I may have been sent that. That may have been sent to me. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just not aware of that one. And Texas Open Carry is probably CJ. Grisham, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know about the event? CJ will be up on the June 1st to do an open No, I'm not talking about, was he the one that did this? No, uh, no okay. it's not CJ. Okay, no, this it's, guy, then I don't know anything about it, so I'm going to move on. Yeah, this is just some... Okay, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about it. Okay, well, on. I was just throwing it out there. Yeah, no. I said he got back in the car well, and drove off. Good. Well, good. Yeah. Because that's, that's what... Good. May as well, that's what should happen. So, and, and Oklahoma City P Day, I would I would actually give them kudos because they're they're warming up to what's what's going to transpire. Uh, they are going to have to have an attitude adjustment on uh, how they deal with people who are peacefully at the zoo, legally peacefully carrying a firearm. <laughs> and that's it, yeah. You know, I haven't finished that hamburger. So um, that's going to, that's going to come. And also the zoo is still going to be held accountable for that. And it's too bad. Uh, but like I say. You know, the, the way the law will be in the future here, like I say, you know, if you're at the zoo and they can, you, you bend over, turn sideways, and your coat blows open and they see if you're carrying a weapon, the response from them should be, sir, our policy is that needs to be covered. And your response should be, I'm sorry, yes, you're right, I'll cover it. That should be it. Uh, and otherwise, go have a nice day. Now, specifically, and I did this on purpose, and I'm already people mad at me, but I'm sorry to get over it. But when it comes to the public trust property, it still only applies to a pistol. So if you thought you could 
and conceal carry a long tom <laughs> shotgun down your pant leg and, and, and hobble in there, that, that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> so our objective is to make sure it was clarified that you could carry in there to defend yourself. That's our first objective. We'll worry about being able to show it off later. But, but that, that was our objective to clarify for that. And like I say, uh, the Oakland City Zoo, uh, they're going to pay. Yeah, you're just not going to you're just not going to be messing people's rights or anything like that and think that you know we're above law. No, nope, you're not. You're going to make sure, and we're going to make the example of somebody. I thought we was going to possibly be the gathering place first, but they had to concede because the police said, "Oh yeah, you're going to make us pay too, so we're we're getting out of this. We're getting out of this deal." So, and I've been accused of uh, of uh, taking our rights backwards because of the gathering place. Well, I guess in the big picture, if you just felt like you had to open carry a pistol in there, yes, that is a sidestep, maybe a step back. But when it comes to the River Park Authority who has been flipping us off <laughs> for years, it all ends now. It ends now. You will be able to carry into an event. We're going to make sure the hop jam, that's, this will be the last time that ever happens again that they think that, that's, that they're, they're going to stop people from legally carrying on a public street during a public event, you know, uh, that's going to end. So, um, Is the effective date for that one November also? Yeah, November 1st, yeah. yes. Uh, oh but, but like I say, it's legal now. I said, um, we just clarify the law. I mean, be go carry your concealed guns in there all, all day long. It's legal now. Yeah, Tim. When I tried to get into a hop jam concealed carrying, they wanted me, and they told me the issue was they consider it private property while the event is going on because they have leased the city streets. We're gonna, okay, we're not only going to cram that down the throat, we're going to break it off. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm fed up with this stuff. It's, it's obvious. We it's don't just go country. to the state council exactly. to make these laws for municipalities to flip us off. It's not going to happen. Now, be patient with me. It may not all happen at once, but folks, we've got some great, I, I forgot to write down who it was. But someone sent me an email and said, hey, this city park has put up a no gun sign. And I said, uh, have you talked to him about it? And he goes, no. I said, okay, I want you to talk to him about it. And I gave him, sent him the basic information. He makes one phone call yeah. with one email, and guess what happened? The sign went away. Hey, the sign's going away. I what? had that result myself. It, it, exactly, to... exactly. So. So that's that's the the smaller stuff that that stuff is, and it's going to it's going to continue to to go on through uh, the whole state like this. It doesn't all happen at once, but like I say, um, my first intent was to make an example of all these little ones, so the big ones would go, well, I guess so. But the big ones have been so arrogant. Okay, well, we're just going to say we're going to shove it down your throat and break it off. Because I, I, you know, no, I'm not. I don't go up that capital. And I know you guys don't go to that capital just to be flipped off and urinated on if you want to go to an event when you're not bothering or hurting anybody. There. Okay. Would it be possible to introduce some type of legislation so that when a situation like in Broken Arrow happens, when someone calls in and says that you're pointing your rifle at people, but they can't find a witness and they don't have any proof of it? It's already, it, you it's, know, it's, it's in the burden of proof bill. It, that's part of it. And there's several different aspects to that. That's actually a good question. There's several different aspects to that. From what I understand, and I'm not the absolute on that, the lady kind of recounted that it was being pointed. <laughs> well, that's convenient, isn't it? So that, that's going on. And now, did she say that at first so they would show up just so she could make sure they showed up? All she's got to do is say, well, I thought he was, and this thing goes away pretty fast as far as that part of the evidence of it. So uh, you, you can try to make more law. There's already laws existing that says you lie to a cop or a report, it's, it's a crime. That's already in existence. But yeah. to prove that, you know, I would rather take the effort to change the heart of the culture than have to forcefully do like we're doing the big cities, mm -hmm. making sure we can carry a gun. I, I would, because look how, look, look at this list, the list of, I mean, we probably got close to 20 parks that have said no guns, and we said, uh-uh, and now they've changed. And this is all this year, you guys. This is all this year. So, you know, just, just hang in there with us. And like I say, be persistent, be polite, because like I said, I've learned, <laughs> it's pretty funny, Turner Falls is a real good example. 
you know, when I send an email down there, I get no response. But when you send that certified letter, copy to your attorney, it's amazing. Now, they didn't respond back to me, they responded back to the attorney. Whatever. And so they said, well, we, we don't have a, a meeting, so we can change this till the next meeting. We'll be patient. Just make sure it's on the agenda. It's up on the agenda. It gets voted, I think, five to seven to nothing to change. Yeah, you dang him right. You're getting ready to crawl up your rear with that. So it gets changed. Uh, like I say, these things, like I said, I've learned you can come in, scream at them. And like in Bartlesville, it's a perfect example. Look, folks, you can't do this. Here's the law. Here's what's going to happen if you don't change it. So here's your options. And they look at it and they go, we're going to change it. Great. And they had it changed within a week. At Piedmont, <laughs> I sent an email on Monday morning at 7 o'clock. And by 9 o'clock, the sign was down, taken down by the chief of police himself. <laughs> so, it, you know, it, it's, it's just better to be nice about this. And then if they bow up, then we'll, you know, shove it down some throats and break it off. And I, we've had some bow up a little bit. They thought they were going to. And they realized, man, this is, this guy's not going to go away. <laughs> so anyway, yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to charge you about a question, too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come on, what do you got? We can't carry on OU campus. That's correct. Okay. How about the medieval fair and those events? If it's on university property, the answer is no. You can still have it locked up in your car. It's perfectly legal. And as of November 1st, you will not be required to have a license to have a firearm in your car. Now, here's another expansion a lot of people don't realize. The current law says you can only have a pistol in your car. Mm -hmm. Now you'll be able to have a firearm in your car. So when, like I did when I was in college, we'd go duck hunting after class, you know, duck hunting when it got cold, and we kept our, you know, gun locked up behind the seat in the truck. So that can now be back to legal, not that anyone else is getting busted on it anyway. That fair is in Norman. Yeah. The, the fair itself is in a city park. Yes. But the parking that people use to go to that event is OU parking. And there's the problem because you're actually on OU campus to get to the event. Okay, here's a good time. For, in fact, is, is it Avery? This is a good time to why we bring this up. That's why you're a member of US Law Shield. Just in case, because this happens at OU, I know it happens. You could be walking down the city sidewalk and they purchased a home the university has and you can be walking, and now you're on university property and you have no clue you are. Mm -hmm. You can be arrested and charged for being on that university property. Yes. That's why we go back to you need to be a member of U.S. Law Shield uh, when these types of things have happened. Obviously, the, the quicker response is find somewhere else to park that's not on the campus. If you're going to Uber up there, yes. you'll your swords and all your stuff, do that. But <laughs> Uber, Uber up, whatever you got to do, get up there, but don't park and but you're not allowed to have a vehicle. weapon on you if you're an Uber <coughs> passenger. <laughs> I think we're all taking that one too, but that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, you say, okay, 2A is a, a, a rights organization, not just a gun rights organization, but all rights. When I went to the Hop Jam, their first stop on me was I had a GoPro. They refused me to have a GoPro in there, and I saw that somebody had a snake. They had a snake around them, like the big boa. They refused him to have entry. And they are looking in your purse. They won't let you have a backpack. Right. And they wand you before you can walk on a city street. So there's more issues right. there than firearms. You're right. You've got first, second, yeah. fourth, fourth, and fifth fourth. amendment violations going on. Yes. That's correct. That's correct. And, and again, that's one that they're going to pay. Uh, it, just be patient with them, but they're going to pay. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm confused about OU. Okay. Make it clear. You cannot let the firearm leave your car. Period. Keeps in the you can, you can, it's got to stay in the car if you're on a university property, but college property, or high school, junior high, Botech. How, how, how are we supposed to know, like you said about the house, that it's OU property? Do we just call our insurance company and say, hey guys, I just got popped in Norman, Oklahoma, 
were standing on the sidewalk suddenly became OU property. Are you a member of U.S. Law Shield? Yeah. Okay, that's who you call. Okay. Yeah, that's why you got it. Because okay. you weren't committing a crime, especially that you knew of. They may decide to make it a crime. Uh, it's, it's amazing we've learned what uh, law enforcement will do. And like I say, it, it, it's just a few law enforcement that make it look bad for everybody else. Yeah, if you haven't dealt with OUPD, Firearm. Oh, sir, I dealt with them on a knife going into a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> that night, they changed the policy. That night. So, yes, we've dealt with them. Uh, we're fully aware that, that, that they're the fourth branch of government, in their opinion. So we're fully aware of that. And like I say, folks, be patient. This doesn't all happen once, but it is happening. And we are making moves. You got one there? Okay. Uh, online, first of all, uh, comment is they ask that you repeat the audience question so oh. that they can hear it online. Okay. Uh, question from Ricky Stoll again. Uh, wanted to know on an AR pistol, is it in the same category as a handgun for while driving? That is chamber loaded. Yes. An AR pistol, uh, which is exactly what Don Spencer does out in his car right now, has an AR pistol right next to my right knee, loaded, topped off, ready to go. Okay. Second question from Bobby Hayden. Uh, wanted to know if the public trust bill says that you can carry any way, I presume, any way you want until they ask you to conceal it. I would, I would just don't push them and test it. Just go ahead and conceal it and go. That's it. The, 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 neat, the most testing I would do would be that right there. Because, I mean, that could be a cell phone. They could, who knows, that could be a tablet. Yep. That, that could be all kinds of stuff. It could be your purse, your money change, ID. Your OK to a donation <laughs> or membership. All right. Uh, so I'll try to I'll try to repeat the question. I think they can hear what you're stuff on their site. Ask them if they can hear. What's the question? Pistolpeak.com. Ask them if they can hear his question. Uh, can you hear uh, Galen Barry's question when he's pulling these off the uh, Facebook? So we'll see there. It takes about ten seconds. I repeat. Can you hear? Mr. Tell, Barry's question when tell them to hit the hearts button if the, they can. Hit the thumbs up button. Give us a like if you can hear Mr. Barry. Mr. Barry, why don't you speak for us real quick? Give us All a right. Like, what time is it, Mr. Barry? You know what time it's it is. It's 722. Jeez, look how much time I've here. Okay. All right. So uh, oh, oh, we, we figured out on the university. The gun stays in your car if you're on university property. All right. That's, and it's, uh, any, and actually, that's any educational property. If you're at the junior high, the high school, Votech, it's all the same. Okay? Mr. Otap. How about churches that also have private schools on the property? Okay, that's a great question. And you can thank okay, 2 a for clarifying this for you. Uh, it's a school during the week. It's a church on the weekend. Okay, 2 a is quite confident that it would be it is a church on the uh, the Sunday, I would not think that you're going to go walking around with a firearm during the school week, but if it's Wednesday night, you're going to a Bible study Wednesday night in the sanctuary, I wouldn't give it two thoughts. I would not be disarmed for any reason. Yes, Tim? Um, going back to the school issue, if you park on school grounds and keep your, your uh, firearm in your vehicle, are there any um, requirements that it be locked up or secured or anything like that? Yes, there is a requirement for having a school you're going on, a, and here's the good part, it's on a high school or down, secondary school or elementary school. The rule is, is because I had one educator, legislator, that just had to have it. Your firearm has to be covered out of sight. Yep. And obviously your car has to be locked. That's the two requirements. So if, that, if you're on a college campus, I mean, who the leaves a gun in the dash off. anyway? I mean, I mean, I, have, I, haven't, seen, rugby. I, I haven't seen a gun rack in, in years in the back of those the truckies because people are going back behind the seats with it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys can hear that on, on the question back. So there. what you're saying is we can't have like a technical with a mounted belt fed up and bed or anything like that? Uh, you, you, can, <laughs> can, <laughs> you can, but Your son I wouldn't not push a that. <laughs> It's amazing the amount of people that just want to see where the line is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make it complicated here, but right now, anyway, before constitutional carry, if you do not have a permit, you cannot carry a gun within a thousand feet of a school unless you live in that area. You're carrying it to your house. Okay, uh, the great point, but the fact federal is law. federal law, uh, and it's an unconstitutional law. It's already, been, it's already been found unconstitutional once, and it's never been tested since. 
even after they did some little manipulation to it. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got how many constitutional carry states that just say, we're not paying attention to that. Well, I, I violated every time I go out of state. Uh, right. It's so, impossible to drive through a town yeah. without getting within a thousand yeah, feet. Exactly. So, and the only time that's ever been enforced, I think there's been like 14 cases, and each time it was a really bad guy doing really bad stuff. So you just kind of go, well, if that's what they got to get them on to keep them off the street, I'm okay with it too. That's kind of the deal that turned out. Just be aware of the federal guns. But if your property, back or if your is, property is butts up to the school, you don't have to have a license to carry on your property. If you're the owner or live there, or your right. visitor, right? Mm. Well, okay, but that all changes. Let's have permit. But then I say, let's all falls back to what you should you be a member of? Well, U.S. Okay. laws. So yeah. if that was ever become an issue, because here's the other part that we haven't even taken talking about. What if you're at your friend's house is three doors down and you're attacked and you have to use a bona fide act of self-defense. Discharging within a thousand feet supposedly adds another felony to that even though it's bona fide self-defense. So it's possible you could have someone coming after you for that. So let's go back to who do you call in a self-defense act? Do you call your attorney or US Law Shield or whoever your service is? You call them and go from there. And then what do you tell the police when they show up? No, talk to my lawyer. What? Talk to, talk my, to lawyer. my lawyer. That's right. We'll make sure that's very clear. And if you don't think you can say that, say nothing. Just no, say nothing. Uh, you need to say that. Say, no, yeah. no. You can't just say nothing. They can hold that against you. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know, no. That's why you have a handgun license. You can hand them that. Also, and we'll, we've got some OK2A okay cards with all of your identification, your license number, and your address, your phone number, your attorney's phone number is all in it. And you can hand them that card, and that card says, talk to my lawyer. Right. Is that what you have to do? Yes, sir. Is the 1,000 foot rule pertaining to school property or to the actual? See, that's what's so itself. screwy. That it property. used property. to be a from circle. The edge of the property. Yeah, it used to be the circle, and then it's from the edge. It, guys, have three, more three than three. I walk through a park that's well, very close to a school, and I'm wondering if there's anything <clears> in that. If you have a permit issued in the state that you're in, then you're covered. No, it's unconstitutional. Well, it's already been found unconstitutional. I agree, but it's the law says if it. you have a permit in the state that you're in, then you're okay. I think put it this way. State, I'm not paying any attention to it. It's unconstitutional. It's none of their business. I don't care who the feds are. It doesn't matter. It's the state says, the state has reaffirmed my right that I can carry there. So, you know, if you want to sit there and just you split hairs all day long, but again, show me someone that's been convicted of it that has, I'm sorry, show me someone that's been convicted of it that has been peacefully carrying in that area and you're not going to find it. So, it's, it, let's say the 13 or 14 cases had to do with, let's say, really bad people that were doing really bad stuff somewhere around that school. And that was one of the things they attacked on with. So. That's not one, and also since we've got a president that's not too worried about, he's actually trying to get guns in the school, I'm not threatening it for, for a minute here. So let's don't make something out of that needs to be worried about this time. And like I say, U.S. Law Shield, that's what the phone calls for. They couldn't hear the question again. Oh, uh, the question was the thousand foot, the thousand foot thing around uh, schools, and it's just elementary and secondary schools that applies to, uh, uh, that, um, uh, the U.S. or the lovely U.S. federal government back in the 90s put this Gun Free School Zone Act, which was signed in by the first George W. Bush. Joe Biden. You said Joe, Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. He was the senator. Biden. Bush had the president, right? Okay, so anyway, but, but President Bush signed it. Yeah. It was found unconstitutional for, for some reason, and then it was revamped just a little bit, and it's still just as unconstitutional, and it's never been tested. So uh, people worried about, well, if I don't have a license and I'm within 500 feet of school, folks, that's why you have U.S. Law Shield, that's why you have attorneys, and let them take that on. All right? You got one there? Okay, online question from Henry Wise. Henry. He's wanting to know about, I presume, carry at Lake Carl Blackwell, and is that OSU property and et cetera? That's a pain in the butt. That's one of the ones we're working on. Um, I... Uh, yeah, it's all of a sudden you're in this rural area and you can't have a gun uh, on this college property. 
You can have it in your car. So if you want to go drive through there, it's nothing. And I understand they actually have an officer there. I've not been up there, but I am going to go up there. But again, we got so many irons in the fire, folks. I'm, I'm going to go fight the real battles. Like I say, constitutional carry, make sure we can carry, expand. But that is on my list. Uh, there's no reason why it, it, it should. One of the bills we'll look to introduce next year will be to carry on university property, but not in two buildings. And that will clear some of this up. And it'll also clear up the people who just walk down the sidewalk to go to the fair, you know, so like that. Yes, Tim? How, how about we get a presence on campus, OK2A does, with a table or something to try to talk to the people that, that do go to school there and see if we can have a How about them. if it looks like this? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I don't know if you'll be able to swing very wide and show these, but we've got, we've got new stuff. This is the stuff we're going to be setting up for the booth in November at uh, Wanamaker Show. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. James Miller for getting this stuff fixed up and done for us. It looks awesome. So yeah, that's. Uh, but again, I'm not going to do this. The college students are ready to step up. I got other fires to put out. And uh, oh, there's a college student right there. Right? If we have volunteers in the organization, I forget. There's college students that show up sometimes. So anyway, but yeah, uh, but yeah, we've got we've got this stuff. It's going to start showing up at a, a lot of neat spots just like this, so we can tell them who we are and what we are. Uh, a lot of this needs to come from your word of mouth because I have found through my history, uh, if someone convinces another person to be a member of something, it's, it's rock solid and they don't go away. All right, because if that was not the case, I couldn't run Kindle off. Uh, yeah. Kindle's hard to run off. Yes, sir. I got a question. You have a question. All this flooding, a lot of dams is Corps of Engineers. Right. I know you cannot carry on the Corps of Engineers. Right. Like lakes, where does their property end and where does it start? That's a great question because you got, like Edmund has city property going up to the core property and some of it is shared. So the, the deal here is I've asked Senator Lankford about this specifically and then some little problem happened that the, the uh, uh, House of Representatives and the federal government changed to Democrat control, so it's on ice. But the request was pull core property with the same respect as U.S. force, the U.S. Um, National, Park. National yeah. Parks. Because there's no reason, there, there's no reason, and most of this stuff is rural area, and there's no reason for it to be like this. So that was one of him. He said, okay, I don't have any moving on it. I don't see any moving on it, um, but that's why you have U.S. law shield. So if you go into one of those spots and for some reason they show up, because the way I look at it too, our state government should be saying, Bet you ain't coming here enforcing that. That's unconstitutional. We'll take care of it. You guys just go away. That's the first thing that should be happening. And so we need we need a state government that says the Tenth Amendment is uh, is going to be upheld by this state and that the feds don't do anything in the state unless they've got our permission. So that's how we look at it. So that's kind of the answer for now. And uh, like I said, we don't have it all planned. I haven't done all this weekend. <laughs> maybe, maybe after that. Sure. Any other questions there? Okay, another one, from, you answered the course question uh, that was asked online also. Uh, another question about tribal land. I assume they set their own boundaries? This tribal is land, Dave folks. Chandra. Not part of so my, my, my goal is this. Sorry, Dave Chandra. Dave, Dave. Sorry, Dave, my goal is this, is that we continue our growth with OK Two Way, and my goal is to start working with the tribes that own these properties, because obviously they're never going to want you to carry into a casino. But you should be able to get your car walked up there and not be a big deal. And if you go into the Travel Plaza on I-40, sure. that's uh, on, and it, it should not be a big deal if you walk into something like that. Um, so my goal is to work, but I don't have to tell you, the the liberalism inside the uh, Indian nations is terrible uh, as, as far as this. And but um, also, it's pretty impressive on some of it. There's a the gun, uh, it's Shawnee. Mm -hmm. That gun range PBC. is on Indian property. What? So some things are warming up to that. Yeah. It's so, owned by an Indian too. I'm, I'm sorry? It's owned by an Indian too. Yeah. So so maybe some of this stuff will warm up and, and but like I said, folks, I'm just trying to get our state stuff straightened out now. We still got the gold. No, we do not have true constitutional character. If you have to ask for permission to carry your gun on a, on a campus, 
that it's, we still don't have it yet. If you have to, have to have permission to carry your gun into an unsecured public building with the exception of a courthouse, courtroom, uh, jails, detention facilities, things like that, everything else you should pretty much be able to carry your firearm into without having to ask for permission or worry about uh, being an issue with that. Again, those are those are the big goals we're after, and, and the big one too is capital carry. Um, but you guys, I'm really tired of feeling naked when I go for my car inside that capital, and it's really, really naked. You leave there at, after dark, and you're walking all the way out, a quarter of a mile to your car. Uh, that's just not the most real secure feeling uh, in the world there either. I want that change too. So, uh, and we've got Senator Bullard who has the bill. It's been introduced, and it's going to be the ones that will hopefully get moving next year. What time are we at? Uh, Seven thirty-six. Seven thirty-six. Okay. One more question. Oh, that's it. Okay. All right. Let me do this. Um, one other thing. I was going. Uh, no, I did that. I did that too. Look at this. We've gone over this. Okay. Like I say, Pontotoc County, I'm going to be there Thursday night, June 1st. Get your tickets to the awards banquet and please be there and come meet these guys and thank them for what's going on. All right? Tulsa meeting Thursday night also. Tulsa meeting is Thursday night. Oh, bring me up to date. What was Sepulpa? What are we going to do about that? What's the temp? Do you know? Do you don't know? Nothing official yet. Nothing's official yet. Yeah, they're more than welcome to come to the Tulsa yeah, County Sepulpa, meeting Thursday. They, yeah, Tulsa, uh, Sepulpa. Uh, you're more than welcome to come to the Tulsa meeting. Uh, people showed up the last time in Sepulpa and the restaurant was being refurbished. <laughs> and so it was, they had a meeting out in the parking lot and that was it. So anyway, all right, I'm going to do the rest of the questions after we get off of here. All right, so let me go ahead and close this out. Um, folks, like I said, the awards banquet, get your tickets, get online. We're going to email out again. We're also going to have it on Facebook. You keep pointing at me like, what am I doing wrong? Because <laughs> right, we're already over now. Uh, okay. That's right. that's right. Let them know when the meetings are monthly. Sepulpa? No. Look, look, first right. Thursday. I'll mess it up. First Thursday. First Thursday. Wait, Sepulpa's not there, so I'm not going to tell them Sepulpa. All right. What's, what's the fourth Thursday is Tulsa. Tulsa. The fourth, fourth Thursday. Fourth Thursday of each month is Tulsa. Now, Oklahoma City, July, we don't have a meeting. It's because we're out li celebrating liberty all month. Right? <laughs> yep, that's the way I look at it. All right, so folks, I appreciate you on Facebook Live coming and asking questions. Also, uh, uh, you can do YouTube, we'll talk about that later. All right, folks, uh, I'll take more questions after we're done here, but I'm going to shut this off, all right? All right, guys, thanks for showing up. Appreciate it very much. <laughs>